Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to February's Monthly Roundup where we talk about the changes made to my board game collection. Hi everybody and welcome to this much more informal video with the monthly roundup for February where of course I'm going to talk about well what I always talk about once a month which is new games added to my collection, um, games I've traded for, um, things I've been playing and then of course like there's a little bit of wish list at the end and a little bit I suppose about the channel and just how the past month really has been going. So February short month yeah I, I, I feel it with you yet it seems to have dragged on forever and I had a load of really exciting things happen to me this month. It's also the month where I have officially kind of broken my whole I'm not going to buy any new board game shtick, I'm just going to play the ones I own. Um, to be fair, I'm playing the ones I own too, but you know when there's just a really good bargain you kind of just can't say no to? Yeah, so mostly I'm bargain hunting mixed in with this, you know, playing games I already own. And you know what? It's been kind of fun to be honest. And since I've kind of set myself a new goal with these monthly roundup videos, I'm going to try and make them a little bit more timely because I understand, you know, time is short for watching videos. Um, and so I'm going to jump right into the first section. And this is, of course, games I've acquired in the past month. Um, so it isn't a particularly exhaustive list, but um, I think some of them have been really, really, really cool. Um, so the first one I'm going to pop out is Bora Bora, um, which is an older Stefan Feld game. And those of you who know me well know that I really like Stefan Feld games. I think at this moment in time he's definitely our hottest new designer around the house. Um, and Bora, Bora Bora is basically a game set on like a tropical island and you're trying to... I don't know, be the best chieftain I think might be the best word, but mostly it's you're trying to do a bunch of things that will get you varying victory points. Um, when it comes to dry euros, it's definitely very colourful, it's quite, it's very pretty and it's very fun to play with. It reminds me a little bit of Castles of Burgundy. Um, so far I've only played it once but I, I really really liked it. I just, I love games that give you loads of options about how to win. And even those that, despite the fact, you know, you're not doing amazingly well, you never feel like you're really out of the game entirely. Um, and I really appreciate that. Um, and the minute we finished playing it, we wanted to play a second game. So it's fast, fast becoming a good favourite. But then again, so do most of the fells. I feel a little bit weird talking about them like this. I think I might be biased. But I just think, do you ever just find that designer just, that just speaks to you, that you're like, this is so much fun. I love doing this and this and this. Yeah, I, I have that issue with Feld. So it was really nice to pick up Bora Bora this month. Um, and yeah, totally excited to have it here. Now, the second thing that we bought when we bought Bora Bora is Tris Majestus. So this is from Board and Dice Games, isn't it? Board and Dice. What's it say on the box? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue with this Board and Dice. They're the same people who made um, Teo to Hukan um, and whatnot. So, I haven't played this yet. Um, I've heard very conflicting things about it, let's be very honest. I've heard that it's overly complicated. Um, I've heard that it gets boring after a couple of plays. But nonetheless, people seem to be enjoying it. And I quite like the theme. And I got it for a really reasonable price when we were buying Bora Bora. So I was like, okay, we'll try Tris Magistus. I'm not even pronouncing it correctly, I'm sure. I need to do like a pronunciation guide. Um, but so far, I have to say the components in the box um, are very impressive. Um, there's a lot definitely going on to build out, you know, in the game. And the other interesting fact is that one of the designers um, for this game has worked with Simone Luciani quite a bit. And we quite enjoy their, his games when they're combined with other people. So there's, I think there's a lot of hope here for Trisma Justice. We're the kind of people that don't mind something that's overly heavy or even badly explained to begin with once you, you know, get over that hump. So we didn't really mind that a whole lot. Um, so yeah, looking forward to playing that. Have to get it to the table just yet. If you've played it, um, please give me your insights, maybe some tips and tricks, it'd be great. It would be lovely to win on the first try. Um, okay, and then next up is the final thing that we bought this month, the whole three games. Technically we bought four, but the fourth one hasn't shown up yet. So I guess that has to wait till next month. 
So the final game that was on my purchase pile um, was one that was super cheap on sale, that's why it's been picked up, but it has been on my wish list for quite a while. And this is Riverboat. Um, I think it's published by Mayfair Games and its um, designer is Michael Kiesling, who you probably know from Azul and all sorts of other amazing games like Heaven and Ale. That's a great game as well. So he's got a kind of a lot of prominence behind him and Riverboat from the box doesn't look particularly exciting. You should see the back of it. We were like, oh my God, this looks brilliant. You've her own little board, all sorts of colors. No idea what you do. Um, I'm just entire. I just entirely wanted this game based on kind of the theme, the designer, and the fact that I like heavy euros. I don't even know if it's a heavy euro. It's just, it looks good. You know when you look at the back of the box and you're like this, this thing here, this is me, this is what I like, I know it. I can, you can sometimes just tell by how a game sets up or how the components sit together, whether you're gonna like it or not. I'm a firm believer in that. Have you ever had that happen to you with a board game? Like I remember when we opened up Terra Mystica and I got handed my player board and I was like this. This is me, right here, this player board. Um, and I feel that way about Riverboat. So I'm looking forward to trying it now this weekend. There's only so much time you have to read rule books during the week. These all literally just showed up a day or so ago. Um, so it's all, all new stuff, but not like an excess of the new, just a gentle set of the new. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, so those are the things I purchased this month. Um, I wanna hear about your purchases. Did you pick up anything exciting? Um, have you had any Kickstarters arrive? I think there's been a bunch landing lately, right? Um, that have been, you know, you've been waiting for and whatnot. Someday Viceroy will show up, I swear. But um, yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear what you've grabbed yourself to play with. <laughs> that sounds really random. So the second section of this video is where I talk about trades. Um, trades have definitely been on the lighter side, which kind of surprises me. I think we've some games that are great for trading. You'd think this, but of course it just, you know, doesn't always happen the way you wish, but we did manage one trade. And we traded away, um, actually, yeah, a bunch of kind of, a bunch of games that we liked, but not liked enough to play a second time. Do you guys ever have that problem where you play something once you go, yeah, this is pretty good, but then it just can't compare it to everything else. So first one is Port and Nigra. This is a Kiesling and Kramer game, I believe it's definitely Kiesling anyway. I can't remember if both their names are on the box because the box is gone. Um, and that's actually a really, really cool game where you're like on your little horse and you're building buildings, but you have to go around in a circle and you can only build the spaces where you land. Um, it's very, very fun. I really, really liked it when we played it. I just, it didn't just hold up well with games, I suppose, in the same category. Um, the second thing to go is Adventureland, which is definitely a Kiesling Kramer game. Jesus, what's going on, people? Uh, I wouldn't mind, I love their stuff. Um, but Adventureland is part of kind of the Habba line, and I definitely feel like it's more aimed at families. And um, while we thought the game was pretty clever, it just wasn't something, you know, that kind of spoke to us, I suppose. Um, I could see, though, how it would be good with kind of a younger audience to play with. Um, so that's the reason that's going. And then the last one is a game called A Castle for All Seasons. And this is from Marcus and Inca Brand, who you may know from making games such as Raja the Ganges, um, Village is also theirs. So we kind of held hope for this, which is kind of basically fortifying a castle. Um, and it was interesting enough on the first play, but not very compelling, does that make sense? Not compelling enough that we hadn't played it in over a year and we had a chance to replay it and we just, we just weren't feeling it. Um, it's probably just a little dated, I think, too, because a lot of these games are older games and having to compete with newer stuff is difficult unless you're doing something really, really special and specific. Um, and none of those games really felt like that. So, what do we trade them away for? So, on the advice of Sean from Thing 12 Games, this is your shout out, um, I traded for a copy of Vanatu. Vanatu? I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Vanatu. I've heard it's mean. Um, and it's a, a Euro game where you're going around an island and doing different things, um, as far as I can gather. The components in the box look really, really good. Have a look at that. And it's in like an orange box. It's kind of pretty. Um, so I'm prepared for the meanness I've been told, you know, is coming my way. And we also traded for a copy of Pillars of the Earth, which is a game that's been on my list for actually quite some time. It's a game about building a cathedral, I believe. Now, the only issue is with our trade is that Pillars of the Earth arrived in German and we didn't trade for a German copy, so I think that's being sorted out. Um, my other half deals with the trades, thank God. I just couldn't be doing that kind of stuff. So we'll see what happens with that, but I would really like to play Pillars of the Earth. So who knows, who knows? So that is all the trading that's happened this month. It's small, isn't it? Yeah, it's tiny, tiny trading. I think we just got spoiled in the previous couple of months where we had all these big boxes of trades. Um, and now it's all kind of quieting down. That's not necessarily a bad thing. 
Um, so as always, I want to know, um, have you traded for anything? Um, have you been fortunate enough to arrange a trade? Or if you haven't, you should try it out. Go see. If you've got some games that you don't know what to do with, put your, go to Board Game Geek, make yourself a, a list of games you want to trade, and then go and you'll find other people who want to trade with you and see what happens. Like, it can be, if, it can be a little bit risky sometimes because you don't know who this person you're trading with is, but it can also be pretty amazing. Um, so, you know, there, there's bonuses and negatives to absolutely everything, but I'm a big fan of trading. So that is all of the trading stuff done. Haha, <laughs> look, I'm motoring along so you guys will have time for the rest of your lives. So the third portion of this video is the one where I talk about games I've been playing. Um, and I have actually, yeah, I have a couple of good ones this month. There was definitely a period where I didn't play as many games as I wanted to. Um, you know, sometimes you have to be in the mood to play a game. Yeah, I know, it sounds kind of weird. I wish I didn't have that problem, but I do. I have, I have moods and whatnot, um, and depending on how I'm feeling while I'll play. So I'm going to start out with the biggest achievement of the month, which is the fact that um, we played Gloomhaven and we've completed Gloomhaven. So we, we made it all the way to the final final in the big old Gloomhaven box. It took us 39 different games to do so. Um, and we unlocked all of the little boxes apart from two. So there's two characters, we still don't know who they are. Um, and for us Gloomhaven, we played a lot of it and then we got to a point where we just kind of got bored or kind of got stuck. I don't know, I, we, like when we look back now we were like, we probably just didn't like the characters we were playing or that they didn't gel together just right because there's only two of us playing this right so it's kind of important that your characters can work well together. Um, and so we were forcing ourselves to finish it because we were so close to the end. We sat down last Sunday and said okay we're, we're just going to finish Gloomhaven today. And the minute we finished the quest and I got to change my character and my husband got to change his character, it all felt 100% better and we were kind of like, well, what are we going to do now that we finished it? Maybe we'll play with the expansion. Of course, we bought the expansion a long time ago. Because um, originally we were like, oh, we're never going to play with that now. We just want to get Gloomhaven finished. And I, I think it just goes to show you how important your character is and how much fun you're having is. And we kind of felt bad that we didn't just bother swapping them out earlier when we were unhappy with them so that we could have enjoyed the game further. Um, I still think it's a great achievement to have finished Gloomhaven. I'm actually, yeah, I'm pretty proud of us. We don't, we don't normally finish these campaign things particularly well. Um, but yeah, I'm delighted to have made it there. But the big question now is what the hell do we do with the box? It's huge and I, I don't particularly want to throw it away. Like we used the reusable sticker set so maybe someone else could have a use for it. I don't know, but it's, it's so big and it's kind of special so we'll have to sort that problem out in a bit. So of course the big question is, is have you played Gloomhaven? I think I think a lot of gamers really want to dip their toes in it, don't they? Um, and if not, why not? Would you like to give it a go? And assuming that you are in fact already playing Gloomhaven, how far into it are you and how are you feeling about it at the moment? Because it's a big undertaking. Gloomhaven is no kind of easy feat. Um, it takes a lot of work and love and dedication to get as far as you want in it. But um, I do think it's kind of worthwhile at the end. Somebody actually asked me on Twitter, you know, how did I feel now that I finished it compared to when I started it? Um, and you know what? It was good to have it finished. I think it feels good to have it finished because it was kind of hanging over my head for a while there. But I actually had a lot of fun in those last couple of, you know, scenarios <laughs> once I had a different character. So who knows? Who knows? So yeah, I want to hear about your Gloomhavening experience. T t tell me everything. Okay, so second game I'm going to talk about that we played. This is a debate whether I want to talk about this or not. Um, I'm going to go actually with In the Year of the Dragon. <laughs> yes, it's a Stefan Feld game. I know, I know. I've got one more Stefan Feld that's unplayed in my collection. That's Notre Dame and I really need to get to that. We, we've two of them we got at Essen and haven't played yet. I'm deciding we were going to take our time and eventually kind of get to them all. So we went with In the Year of the Dragon. And this is probably one of the most depressing games I've ever played. Actually, no, I played this war of mine. No, no, no. Um, this is just kind of stressful, I think might be the word for it. So basically what the premise of the game is, is that you are in charge of a village um, and you have a track of tiles that are revealed each round. That, and these are things that are going to happen to your village. And they're all terrible, without exception. So the entirety of the game is spent preparing yourself for the terrible things that are going to happen. And the problem with this is, is that someone else can get to pick their tiles before you so they can decide what happens. You don't always get a say. And basically trying to manage your losses. It's just like, it's just so sad. <laughs> I think it's the only way to put it. 
because like you're like right I'm ready you know there's a there's a trip coming I've got food ready I'm good and then you deal with that and you're like oh no I need fireworks I just I wasn't prepared for this festival and then the emperor shows up and he's like hey 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 give me some monies it's just never ending litany of pain um, but you know what? It's actually really clever, and like I rather like I rather liked it. I think it'll be fun with more people than just two, because the trick with this is obviously laying out you know your intentions early on. So coming up with the plan and then having to follow it through and being able to alter the plan when your opponent interferes with your plan. That's basically it. Because you can see all these things coming up. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Shogun or something like that, in the sense that you know the doom is coming prepare <laughs> um so it's quite interesting it's not difficult to explain and it's light enough too um despite the serious looking box um but i yeah i quite i quite like that and it's one i don't hear people talk about too often either so if you're a fan of felds or even if you're not actually it doesn't even feel that feldy it feels a little bit more like Uwe rosenberg where everything is mean and people are starving and there's no houses for anybody to live in <laughs> <sighs> yeah, if you want a little bit of stress in your gaming, I would definitely recommend In the Year of the Dragon. And the final thing on the list of things that I've been playing in the past month um, has to go to Concordia. Um, so as some of you may or may not know, Concordia has the most boring box in the world, um, but some very beautiful maps inside and some really, really fun gameplay. And it's a game about being part of the Roman Empire and basically spreading yourself into separate regions and then being able to gain goods from the regions. But that's not really what the game's about. The game's really about the fact that you start with a handful of cards and each one is an action you can perform on your turn. And so you decide to decide what to do. You're like, I want to build a house, right? I'll play this card and I'll put it down. And you play all of the cards from your hand up until the point where you want to take them back. And there's a card that says, hey, I take all my cards back and put them in my hand. And it's genius. It's it's super clever. And Concordia is a game that's definitely well loved here. Um, but not one we've taken out in a while. I don't I don't know why. We just decided like last week we should try Concordia. And we pulled it down and it was like it was like putting on an old coat. It was just such a nice feeling. I was like, oh Concordia, oh wow. And it it's so simple to explain. That's the thing. Concordia, you could teach in under five minutes. The rules page is like yay big it's tiny there's more there's more background information in the rule book than there is actual rules which i love i love a game that doesn't need much explanation and kind of does it all for you and it's just so elegant and so much fun i completely forgot how much fun it was um so not only did we play concordia once but we introduced it to some friends of ours who, ours who had never played concordia before and so we were a bit worried because you know that first turn where you teach Concordia and you're like, you need to buy these cards with these symbols so that you can score victory points. Please don't forget. And it sounds like a lot in there and everyone got very quiet. Um, and then after the first round, we're like, oh, I see what we're doing here. Um, and then we, you know, it's someone who's a silk merchant and then the other person who just wanted to flip zones. Um, it was really fun teaching uh, somebody Concordia and it really reignited my, my love affair with it. I don't know why I've left it there so long, um, but it really is a very, very special game. I think Concordia really is outstanding. If you haven't tried it, check it out. Um, you won't, you won't regret it. It's just, it's so fab. Um, and so that, yeah, that's that's Concordia. So what do you guys make of it? Actually, a lot of people rate it really, really highly. Um, and shut up and sit down did a review for it, and then everybody loved Concordia out of nowhere. Um, and I wonder, you know. Did, is it deserving of all this praise? I certainly think so. Is there anybody who doesn't like Concordia or just think it's okay? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on Concordia? Um, yeah, no, absolutely love it. So those are the kind of the three main things um, I said I would talk about today. Obviously, I play other games um, and whatnot. So that that's all good. Okay, so now I just made an amazing realisation, which is I did receive more board games, but these are review copies. So I'm going to shove this section in here because I'm here. Um, okay, so review copies. So the first thing um, show up this month and there'll be a review. Actually, it's already recorded and ready to go. I'm really ahead of myself for a little bit. Is My Little Sides from Stonemaier Games. So those of you who know and love Side, the, the big game with the miniatures and the action selection on the cool board where everything's really pretty, well, there is now like a family friendly version. You know, where have you been if you haven't heard about it? Um, and basically um, it is based on a fan made variant of Side where somebody combined My Little Ponies with Side. So you got My Little Side, 
see? Um, now, obviously there's no my, my Little Ponies in this. Hasbro, I think, had no idea what size was and didn't want to have ponies used in their board game. So they invented their own kind of little cutesy characters based on the pets, I think, in the main side game. Um, it's actually really, really fun. It's gorgeously made. Like, it's it's stellar. You, you'll see when I unbox it soon. You should go watch that. <laughs> I hate having to sell myself inside of my own videos, but I think this is how people do things. Um, but yeah, Side is wonderful. I can see a lot of families really liking it. It definitely feels like Side, just a bit shorter and definitely a bit more fun. So you can look out for my review for that coming soon. Um, the other review copy that showed up this month is a game called Cleocatra, and this is going to be coming to Kickstarter early in March. Um, and this is a really fun game. Um, basically about rescuing cats from pyramids in ancient Egypt. It's a little abstract kind of tile laying thing where you want to connect cats of, of different colours and then you will score however many cats you like have arranged a little meeple. Um, it's very clever, it's tiny, it takes up little to no space and it's very fun. And it's got some really adorable little kitty cats on it. So unsurprisingly I will have a Kickstarter video ready for that soon with its own special Kickstarter video involving cats and pyramids. Yeah, I've been working real hard. And the final review copy um, that you'll be hearing from soon, but not filmed yet, is Sorcerer City, because that only showed up this week. And this is from Druid City Games. It's just off Kickstarter, I do believe. I have some sort of deluxe fancy version. Ooh. Um, with some sort of metal, metal, they're not coins, they're victory points. And this is a speed tile laying game. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so yeah, basically you have a, a pile of tiles and you place them down, you're trying to match up the colours to build districts. You're technically you're wizards who are being architects and you're constructing districts, but for me it's connecting coloured tiles into districts. Um, and it's actually really, really quite fun. I thought the speed element would turn me off, but it's a very fair timer, so that's good. I'm still debating how well balanced the game is or if it's just my husband is really good at these things so I want to give it a few more plays. I've played like four or five times now and I feel like I need another one or two just to see if you know there are patterns emerging if it's you know if you're the person in the lead at the start are you going to be the person in the lead at the end those kind of questions so working out in those but so far that's been that's actually been quite fun and it's quite quick as well um and it's probably the most overproduced game I've ever seen but the cover is stunning you might have seen my pictures of the cover it's really gorgeous on the outside um I wish it was as gorgeous on the inside but it's good it's good there's something to it there's something to it so that is all of my review copies Woo! So um, you'll be seeing and hearing from me in a little bit more with those. That sentence didn't make all the sense, but yeah. Um, so yeah, so lots of things to look forward to. So I'm going to wrap out this part of the video um, with just a couple of big things that have actually happened to the channel in the past, you know, month. Um, so the first is um, I passed my two year anniversary. So I've been making board game reviews for over two years now. I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed considering this is something I started um, on a whim and didn't really think I would be doing this much time later. Um, yeah, I'm still here. Um, I, ho I hope you guys, um, especially those of you who've been here since the start, and I know there are a number of you, um, I'd like to thank you for always watching. There is at least 30 of you who always watch all of my videos no matter what it is. and. I never forget you guys because every time I feel a little bit down about you know I wish more people could see this game especially all these cute ones I have from Taiwan at the minute that it's getting very hard to get people to kind of look at them because they don't know what they are. I remember that there are about 30 people which is a whole room full of people when you think about it who regularly watch whatever I put up and to those people I love you you're brilliant um, and thank you so much because it means a lot it really does I'm not going to try and get too emotional about it but it means a lot. Um, in other amazing news, I'm past the 500 subscriber mark, way, which means I'm over halfway to my goal. Um, I think I've said it before and I'll say it again, my goal is to hit 1000 subscribers. And after that I won't care, I just, just that's it, that's my, my one thing, I just want to get that far. So creeping there ever so slowly. And the other exciting news is that I was interviewed on a podcast. So if you want to hear a little bit about my origin story, about the Tabletop Inquisition podcast that I um, co-host with Oliver from Tabletop Games blog. Um, you can go and listen to it. Um, so the We're Not Wizards podcast, I think you can just search it and find it and, fi and you'll find my name. 
um, and I was terrified doing such a thing, but it came out really well. I think it, I think it sounds okay. So you can hear a little bit about how I started the channel, um, what my plans are for it, and kind of how I pick board games. I think that was things as well. It was I can't remember half the things I said. I was so freaked out. <laughs> That's very me. I was just like, <gasps> brain. And if that wasn't scary and exciting enough, the other very exciting news is I'm going to UK Games Expo. Um, I'm going for one day, I'm going on the Friday, and that's because the Tabletop Inquisition podcast is hosting a live podcast, yes, on the Friday at UK Games Expo, which is terrifying, but also amazing. I actually think I do better at public speaking in person than I do in front of the camera. I used to lecture to halls full of people um, and I was kind of okay with that. I think it's easier seeing you, you know what I mean? Like you, you in there. I think it's easier to be able to look you in the eye when I talk than it is to talk to the camera. Um, but that is scary and I'm doing my best to save some money for that. Um, all kinds of things. <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's kind of the exciting news. The final thing is, and you may have noticed from watching this video is, I'm trying to upgrade my equipment a little bit. So I've moved things around. I'm not where I normally sit. And I got myself um, some new light stands and I have a new light on the way, which I hope will um, brighten everything up sitting here in my dark room without getting caught in my glasses. You may know, you may or may not notice. And I got a new lens. So hence why you're getting all this cool kind of blurry stuff, um, which is really what I always wanted to do. Just took me a long time and I had to sell a lot of board games to make it happen, but that's just how it is. Um, so yeah, so I'm trying my best to kind of update and keep everything going. I want everything to to be the best I can make it. It doesn't have to be brilliant, but I, I want to be at a point where I'm comfortable with how things turn out. That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And I've also been studying and doing like a video editing course as well to try and make that even better. So yeah, that that's pretty much what pretty much what I'm doing. So there are more games coming in the future. Um, I'm still working on the channel, and I'm really excited to hear about what you guys have been playing this past month. I, this is my favorite video because most of you actually, well, some of you reply to me and tell me things, and I love hearing about your games and seeing what you're interested in and getting ideas um, and whatnot. So I look forward to hearing from you all. So yeah, that about wraps up the monthly roundup. I hope it's been a good month for you. Um, let's roll on March. Oh my God, March already. <sighs> I say this every month. I don't think it, I don't think it changes. <laughs> well, take care everybody and thank you for watching and we will see you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.